We're in a mess, a complete mess. Now, God bless you, my friends. This is Bishop Patrick L. Wood Sr. here. And uh, listen, I'm enjoying this beautiful day, and I pray that you are. But listen, we're in a mess. When you look at what's going on over in Ukraine with Russia invading, with the speech that Zelensky gave to the a jet, a, a joint session of Congress, what a powerful speech he gave. But you have to admit, we're in a mess because we're, we're trying to balance two things. We have, uh, there is, trying to save the people of Ukraine, which is a noble and noteworthy thing to do. Then there is trying to make sure we don't do anything to trigger World War III if we haven't already. And that too is a noble and noteworthy thing to do. Now, I hate to sound a little political, but before I go uh, po political, let me quote the words of Jesus Christ. Our Lord and Savior, the King of kings and the Lord of lords said this. He said, agree with thine adversary quickly while thou art in the way with him. That is, while you're on your way to court, agree with him, lest at any time the adversary deliver you to the judge and the judge deliver you to the officer and thou be cast into the prison. Into prison. He says, why don't you settle the case before you get to court, keep the courts out of it, keep the judges out of it, and uh, don't let it escalate. Now, I, 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 you know, I started to say I hate to tell you this, but I don't hate to tell you. I'm glad to tell you because you already know this. President Donald Trump, during his reign, said over and over and over, it, isn't it a good thing to get along with Russia than a bad thing? It's a good thing. Uh, Putin is a, he's a dictator. He, he's a thug. He's whatever you want to call him. But, but what, one thing that you must admit, whatever he is, for four years during the Trump administration, he stayed in Russia. During the Obama administration, he invaded Crimea. During the Bush administration, he invaded Georgia. But during the Trump administration, he stayed in Russia. Now look at where we are now. It was President Donald Trump. I'm not defending President Trump, but I am coming after this media because you are some wicked people. And you many times you twist the truth, even at the expense of the American citizens. President Trump warned NATO. We need to increase our defense spending, pay more of your fair share, spend more money on defense. What did the media say? Oh, this president, he's harder on our allies than he are than he is on our enemies and things like that. And look at where we are now. It was President Trump that warned Germany against buying Russian oil. You got Nord Stream 1 already in place. They were building Nord Stream 2. And of course, you know, President Biden, as soon as he got into office, he gave the nod for them to complete Nord Stream 2, which uh, is on hold now since uh, Russia invaded Ukraine, but our president gave them the nod to complete it while at the same time stopping the Keystone pipeline that would have delivered to us would be up and working by now, giving us some 800,000 barrels of oil per day. What is the point of this? Wouldn't The point that I'm saying is, friends, we need to pray, but we need to watch and pray. We need to pay attention to these things because the truth is these things don't just happen. Elections have consequences. It is necessary for the American viewing public to pay close attention and to seek God. Now, we I'm going to close this. I want to invite you to church tonight because we're going to have a mighty Bible study. And to be honest with you, the Bible study won't be about this. But, you know, the Bible study will be Bible study. And as we study the word of the Lord, the word of the Lord speaks to many things. But I want I need you today to join me in prayer that this that this war uh, uh, is stopped, that this escalation, I'm listening to elected officials uh, on both sides of the aisle, Democrat and Republican. I, I, I'm hoping that people are speaking uh, uh, with wisdom and having a thought things through versus knee jerk 
versus knee jerk. Now, much of this could have been avoided had we built up the defenses, moved certain things, uh, military options in place early on before the conflict started. But instead, what did we do? We talked about uh, putting sanctions in place. Sanctions will detour Putin. Sanctions. And then when the sanctions didn't work, and I think we all agree that they didn't work, then we said, well, we knew the sanctions wasn't going to work in the first place. For crying out loud, you, you, th this makes no sense. So we need to pray and ask God to watch over our nation, to, to ask the God of the Bible, get in Putin's mind, turn it, spare the people of Ukraine, God take care of the, the men, women, and children there. And while I'm talking about it, this I have not, my friends, forgot, forgotten about the conflict uh, uh, on the horn of Africa, what's going on in Ethiopia, all oh, the lives that are being slaughtered there. But, you know, that's not worthy of uh, the U.S. media right now. So just, you know, look it up. You'll see that, that you know, that there's conflicts and uh, conflict is taking place in more than one place in the world. And uh, uh, so uh, we need to pray that God will fix it. Father, in Jesus name, we just come before you right now. As I stand in the sanctuary today, I ask you, O oh God, to bring peace to the land. I ask you, O oh God, to intervene in the name of Jesus. We pray, O oh Lord, that you would turn Putin, that you would stop him, that you would stop the advances of the Russian army. We thank you for the lives that have been spared. We pray, God, that you would spare even more. God, we pray for uh, Ethiopia. We pray for the Horn of Africa. We pray for those lives that are being destroyed. The world is not rallying around them. Uh, relief uh, organizations aren't sending packages that I know of. But God, you see and you know. And I pray, oh God, not only for the Horn of Africa, not only for Ukraine, but God, the lawlessness that's taking place in the streets of America today. Oh, Oh, God, turn our nation and Father, turn us back to you in a moral way in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, we just believe you. We put it in your hands and we praise you for all that you've done and for all that you're going to do. We're going to stay alert in prayer. We're going to pray to you, look to you uh, and keep our eyes on you. And Father, if we do this, we know that everything will be just fine. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, my friends, I'm sure you prayed that prayer with me. I appreciate you for praying with me. And I want to invite you to join me right here tonight at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for Bible study. Yeah, you guessed it. I know you're trying to figure out how we're going to get the drum roll in. I have to get it in. I want to build it up. All this to do. All of this build up about what? Studying the word of the Lord. There is nothing on earth like this book. Preachers, preach it. Saints, study it. Believers, live by it. Sinners, turn to it. A agnostic and atheist, wise up, digest it. It'll change your life. This book is the roadmap from earth to glory. And one of these days, I'm going to be in glory with the Lord. And, and you're going to be up there. And we're going, to, we're going to tell this whole world, hey, you can have it. You can have it. But in the meantime, meet me for Bible study. <laughs> God bless you.